The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. Oh, sorry about that. Went to get a banana. <laughs> the letter is on the table, Holmes. I went to get you a banana. A I was feeling a bit peckish. So as, as well as my coffee. There we go. It's all good. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. Where's the letter? Oh my god, you're still there like 24 hours a day looking out of that window. That's just really scary. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. Does anybody know where the letter is? The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. Okay, which table, bro? There's like 40 tables around here. You should examine the body of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. Oh, thanks for telling me how to be a detective, Watson. That's very good of you, sir. You know, I wouldn't know what to do otherwise. So, Watson, what have you learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, I can confirm that the death was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. I love it. Basically, Watson gives a breakdown of what happened, and then Sherlock steps in and just completely contradicts him. That's what's going to happen next. I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson's cold cuts. <laughs> right, where do we have to go with this? Come on, Toby. The best nails in the British Empire. I want him to bark. That was a horse. <laughs> Search, Toby. Come on, Tobes. Oh, man. Imagine having dog vision like this. Oh, he can sprint! Sprinty dog! Look at this! This is amazing. <laughs> Call Sherlock. 360! No, Toby. Don't, don't, no, that way. That way. That's good. Look, it's basically like Doll with his GoPro. Look, it's like this. Webcam vision. You're not a fast runner, Tobes, I'll be honest. Hang on, let's stop for a drink. Thirsty work. <laughs> That's better. Let's carry on. We got this. Look, it goes to the shed that it wouldn't let me in before. Oh, wait, no. They came to the shed. And then they went back this way. What were they doing? They put something in there. They put the silver in there. Look, I told you! I knew this stuff was going to be in here. <laughs> I honestly, if there's silver in here, I'm done. 
The scent leads to the well. I should check it. Well, I wanted to check it earlier. Just saying, bro. Hang on. Let's keep going. See, they, they got some tools. Then they came to the well. They put the silver in there. And then they pegged it over the wall. The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. You said I missed something on the shed. Hang on a sec. Keep looking, Tobes. The intruders entered the shed for some reason when they were making off with the silverware. Hmm, I wonder why. The criminals left the house through the French window. They walked to the shed, then across to the well, before fleeing by climbing over the wall. I wonder why they chose such a winding route. Before making off to the sun. Uh, it's vibrating. Wow, imagine if they made safes like this. Look, you can put your money in here, but if somebody turns a dial and watches it vibrate, they can get in. It's fine. Look at that. It's the worst safe opening. Mafia's safe opening is better than this. Amazing. Amazing. That was it, the window, wasn't it? Cole Wiggins. That was back from episode one, blimey. Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? What the heck's that kid doing? <laughs> Stood on the curb just making a gun. <laughs> At your service, Mr. Holmes. I need a register, my young friend. If you could borrow it. There will be half a guinea for every one of you. I need the crew list of the Rock of Gibraltar in 1893 and their current employment. I'm straight on it, Mr. Holmes. Do you really think they'll find it, Holmes? My secret police is better than the Yard in many ways. The cheaper, lol. Three hours Here later. Here it is, Mr. Holmes. But we can't take it back. It's too risky. Put it on the table. I'll take care of it. Good work, young Wiggins. Do we need to tip the guy? Like, why is he still here? I left it right on the table for you, sir. That's good. Now get out. <laughs> Leave. Okay, which table does he put it on? That one? This list shows... Albert, show these gentlemen where the exhibition was held. How many people work here? Only myself, but occasionally two students, Albert, whom you have met, and Miss White. Miss White did it. <laughs> Just call, I'm calling it now, Miss White did it. Ah, map of Kew Gardens. If only we'd had this first. <laughs> Director's office, cloakroom, laboratory... Reserve, Palm House, you are here. Okay. Right, I see what happened. That was the ventilation system, right? And then we walked through the dry tropics, through the water lily, yeah, through the Palm House, came out here. So we've not been to the nursery, seed house, or any of these rooms yet. Nursery. Nursery. Wait a sec. How do you say nursery, guys? I say nursery. I don't go... Nursery. Nursery. That's a little bit posh. Nursery. <laughs> nursery! Oh, man. Seed house. Seed house. Seed house. <laughs> Can somebody sound like this? Seed house. <laughs> nursery. 
<laughs> I'm gonna have to record this. This is amazing. Seed house. Seed house. Nursery. That is funnier than it should be. Ventilation system. That was normal. Dry tropics. Water lily greenhouse. Colonial collection. Oh, he's gone normal now. Palm house. Palm. Palm house. Nursery. Seed house. Seed house. I'm sorry, that's just too funny. Director's office, cloakroom, and laboratory. Laboratory. Reserve. God, he's so posh. It hurts. Right, that's all of them, I think. A map of Kew Gardens. <laughs> well, well, I never. Oh, brilliant. Necessary. If you don't like autopsies, I suggest you look away for a couple of minutes. These are never particularly pleasant. Just listen to the mood music. Now, let us examine the internal organs. No! It's disgusting. Don't do it. <laughs> oh my god. Did we really just pick this guy's heart up? The heart's blood vessels show no pathological signs. The heart tissue shows no visible pathological signs. But he was supposed to have a heart attack, wasn't he? Ew. <laughs> As if you can just pick somebody's lungs up and go like this and just put it back. Oh my god. The lungs are congested and edematous. You are? The lungs are congested and edematous. Right. Hands up if you know what edematous means. Does anybody know what edematous means? The lungs means? are congested and edematous. Come on, answer before you Google it. Oh, hello. The tissue on the inferior lobe of the right lung is damaged, most probably caused by toxins from an unknown plant. Ooh, really? I didn't know. Right, liver. Can we have some pate with this later? <laughs> The liver is enlarged. It would seem that he was suffering from an alcohol addiction. Ah, oh, liver pate, anyone? The liver tissue is brown. There are no visible pathological signs. Hmm. From the Greek word something, which means injury or harm. Fair enough. The stomach tissues show no visible pathological signs. Let's have a look at the back. There is a small amount of content. It appears that he breakfasted lightly, only a short while before his death. I was expecting to say, it appeared that he breakfasted two Weetabix, skimmed milk. His suspicions <laughs> have been substantiated. Montague Dunn, the director of Kew Gardens, died from poisoning, plant poisoning to be more exact called it I mean, yes it is murder murder I should inform Lestrade there's been a yes, murder but do remember Watson that I discovered the murder the challenge is mine right everybody's private belongings I'm going to shut the door Watson I'll be back in 10 minutes wait I can't shut the door okay you stand there don't look I'm watching you Watson Right, Miss White's locker. Miss White's locker. Jewel box, vanity. I thought she was a student. This this woman's living a lie. There's no way she's a student. She lives on Oxford Street. She's got all these posh belongings. Doesn't she's not a student? White's request. A draft of the letter that Miss White sent to her parents. Dear mother and father. I'm, re I'm writing this letter with reluctance to ask for your help. My studies and, and housing costs on Oxford Street have proven to be more expensive than I anticipated. I fear, therefore, that I may not be able to manage in the long term. I know that we had our disagreements in the past, but would you be so heartless as to allow your daughter to... Oh, guilt trip. To fail her studies due to lack of money. Wow. Wow, Ms. White. I'm sorry, but you're a scumbag. You're guilt-tripping your parents, and you're living the high life. I don't think so. Apparently, Miss White is a capable student. That said a degree in chemistry. Do you see that? A diploma in chemistry. I said she did it. She got sacked, and she did it. 
Let me have a look at the underside. Let me just let me just tip everything on the floor here. Check the outside first for symbols. No. Nope. Okay. So yeah, let let me just get this straight. She's asking her parents for money. Need I say more? Scumbag white. That's all I'm saying. These jewels must be worth a small fortune. A vanity purse. It is of high quality. I called it right at the start, Miss White. It's so looking like her right now. Margaret, who's this from? Your parents. <laughs> we were surprised to receive your letter. How could you think to ask us for money after all these years that you have passed since you left and without any thought of us? You have never shared with us any details of your success at the university, but you choose to do so now. We suppose you should be ashamed of us for we are not from the same high class as your new friends. Yet we are modest people, but you should learn to put your family first as we at home have always done. And none of us have ever compromised their reputation as it appears you have already with your employer, Mr. Dunn. No, Margaret, it is you who makes us feel ashamed. Lol. <laughs> get wrecked, Margaret, get wrecked. Albert, dear Margaret, I know how your financial troubles are overwhelming you at present. She was a liar, wasn't she? Please let me reassure you that I could not permit you to re remain in such a dilemma. I was born of a wealthy family. I would consider it an honour if you might accept my help. Your devoted servant, Albert. Wow. Wow. Albert was fixated with Ms. White. Oh dear, Toby. I wasn't aware that you were Watson's new literary agent. <laughs> What, mate? Watson? Watson? There's only one thing at the end of that telescope, and I know what it is, bro. Really? How does he carry on looking? Oh, my God. That's amazing. Look at him sat there. <laughs> That's awesome. Search, Toby. Search. Come on, Tobes. Let's do this. <laughs> For, this is brilliant. How many games do you get to be a dog first person? Well, it's not quite first person. It's over the shoulder, but... It's still pretty cool. Can you run? Yeah, boy! Woohoo! First person dog hype! <laughs> I love it. Where's he want to go in there? Can we go and bite... Hamish, Hamish, Arr, come on, Hamish. Let me let me bite your shoes. <laughs> Is there a button to cock your leg up? Uh -huh. <laughs> if only. If only they they provided that button. Oh, it goes this way. Hello. Over to the tree. Wait a minute. <laughs> Toby smells something over here. <laughs> oh, hello. He's found something. Hidden place. Let's sniff the hidden place. What have you found, Toby? Congratulations, Toby. Now let us see what you have found. Good day to you, sir. My name is Shul... Erlock. I am exalting the sap. A while can you wait? From the trace of elements and moreover, from the quality of the ambient geotropism it depends. Therefore, please, mind my gravitropism. Its balance, do not disturb. Disturbed is most definitely the word. That's brilliant. There. Completed is the symbiosis. Welcome you are. To introduce myself, I shall. I am the Green Grand Mystic. The... The Green <coughs> Grand Mystic? Himself? This is me. Who am I speaking to? <laughs> we are two gentlemen who are extremely interested in the uh, vegetation philosophy that is advocated by this establishment. Listening to you, I am? Why? Talk like Yoda, he does? 
Here's the green guru. This is this guy's amazing. I am extracting the sap. <laughs> oh la, good, good. I like you. Here is the holy key to the wisdom place. Holy donation, can you make one of you so wish? <laughs> Thank you so much. I love it. I pray you to taste our fertilizer substance. Oh. From the burdens of life, it helps to free. Uh, but of course. Raw sap, it is called. It is near the entrance. We've already tasted the fertilizer, well, bro. we will leave you to your meditation. Wow. I love the way he just went, and you can leave a donation at the door. Like, <laughs> genius. These three plants are identical to the ones shown at the exhibition. I shall take them. Where are you going to put them, Sherlock? In your top hat? Where's that going to go? Where did you just put that? That's insane. Ah, drug stable. Okay. That should be the raw sap that the Green Grand Mystic spoke of. <laughs> raw sap. <laughs> it's opium. Oh my god. Mm. It is rather delicious and of an excellent quality. My word, Holmes. Their sap is like a form of cocaine. Wow. Holmes is... I don't know. I don't even want to say about Holmes. He just picks things up and goes, Hmm, let me, let me try a bit of that. Where is he in here? What did he say here? In the large glass house? What was that? Holmes, oh my god. Yes. We found him like that. Holmes, don't look at me like that. I don't know what to think about all this. I know what to think. You've got a round hat. <laughs> Holmes, don't Where'd they put the body? It's not in here. Where did they put the body? <laughs> Dry tropics. You walk past him? Are you serious? Oh my god, Watson. Just seriously, bro, move. What? Did I actually walk past him? Uh oh, which way did I come in? I wish there was an option to punch Watson. I really do. I thought he got hanged here, so... I thought he'd be around here somewhere. Oh. First person hype. I see the problem with third person now. You don't see things like that. Why have you put him here? Surely you just take him back to the morgue, dude. Condemn Miss White. Dangerous woman, very capable of carrying out an elaborate murder for monetary gain. Oh yeah. She flirted with Dunn's son Albert and later pushed Martin Hamish to his suicide. She deserves a rope. Yeah, I'm, go I'm going with this one. <laughs> Miss White is a desperate woman in debt, resigned to consorting with wealthy gentlemen when Dunn cast her aside. She killed him in desperation. Hamish tried to save her. She deserves a second chance. Hamish tried to save her. Nah. Show her the rope. Show her the rope. <laughs> Confirm your moral choice. Clues found. 22 of 22. Justice is justice. Yes. We got it done. Guys, we got it done. Fyodor Dostoyevsky. This is a fairly grubby place. God, can you imagine? Wouldn't you just love to go back in time? And just see what it looked like? I would. I'd love to be able to go back in time and just see London when it was like this. Probably stank. I bet it was disgusting. And dark at night. 
like the horrible little gas lamps and stuff. Whiskey Fiend, 13 months of support. Thank you, Whiskey Fiend. Oi, oi. What the? Oh, I see. I thought I thought we could talk to him. Apparently, we can't. It would be fascinating. It would, it would be disgusting and horrible and smelly and plague-ridden. I mean, look how dark this is. Even the music's gone creepy. Uh, Watson? Waters? Waters, can you hold my hand? Holmes, poor little Wiggins needs our help. I know. I need you to come down this dark alley with me. It's scary, Watson. It's scary. Did you see anyone else leaving Half Moon Street prior to or at the time of the crime? No, sir. I did not. Even with all the fireworks, I was very attentive, as I'm always on the lookout for customers. <laughs> I bet you are. My thanks to you, Mrs. <laughs> Powell. Some kid comes running down the road with a gun in his hand. Do you want to buy some flowers? <laughs> this kitchen knife is quite sharp. I've got to hear him say that again. Quite sharp. This kitchen knife is quite sharp. Why does he say sharp as if he's like cold? This kitchen knife is quite sharp. <laughs> Check the other Constable wall. Constable Marrow, right, I would gone. value your assistance in this investigation. It would be my pleasure, Mr. Holmes. I would like to make sure that there are no places in Half Moon Street where a man could hide while you were running through it with your lamp. All right, Mr. Holmes, what should I do? Take your lamp and start walking, just as you did before, and try to find me. I'm the guy Understood. with the top hat. <laughs> <laughs> we'll check the other wall in a sec. Let's see what the constable does first. Right, so we're the constable trying to find Holmes. He's under the bags. I can see you very well, Mr. Holmes. All right, constable. Let's try again. I'll find another place to hide. <laughs> You'll never find me here against this wall. <laughs> here you are, Mr. Holmes. All right, Constable. Let's try again. <laughs> He's like the I'll worst find hider. Another place to hide. Oh my God! Playing hiding seat with Holmes is just hilarious. Oh, he's getting better. Little Holmes, he's getting better at this. In that barrel. He's in the barrel. Oh, he's disappeared. What a scumbag. Scumbag Sherlock. Mr. Holmes, it wasn't difficult to find you at all. <laughs> it is obvious now. No one could escape Constable Marrow's lamp while hiding in the street. What? You're a bit slow to catch on, eh? Get lost. You're a bit slow to catch on, eh? Look at that. The guy's got a force field. He's amazing. Right, how am I going to get past here? You have to pick a lock or something. Oh. You're a bit slow to catch on, eh? Perhaps. Get lost. Perhaps he won't see me going this way. What? Scumbag game. Now, you'd never say that was Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> he just looks so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go and talk to Watson. Like, Whoa, who are you? Holmes, I won't be able to join you. I promised to visit a patient today. You've not even looked it's at me, right, Watson. Watson. I think that I can handle this alone. Will Toby recognise me? That's the question. Hello, Toby. All you need now is a shawl and a mop cap, and you could be Mrs. Hudson's younger sister. Stay where you are. What are you doing here, and where is Sherlock Holmes? Are you having Calm a laugh? Calm down, Watson. Take deep breaths now. It's me. Oh, thank God, Holmes. I can't get used to your disguises. <laughs> Thank you, Watson. That means I am ready to go. Right, so... 
We went and talked to Watson with our head completely shaved, massive spectacles, and he was like, yeah, I don't want to join you today. We put a shabby hat on, got rid of the spectacles, and he's like, whoa, what did you do with Sherlock Holmes? Face palm. Who are you? What's your name? My name is Nigel. <laughs> I'm here to open the locks. Talented, eh? Let's see. Go inside the marquee and show yourself to Charles Foley. And I'd highly advise you not to trick him. Got that? I've got it. <laughs> I love this accent. My name's Nigel. <laughs> they say that I can open any door. Do they now? We'll see that lock near the chains on the table over there. Open that. I just absolutely love this accent. Now, listen up. You'll come with us tonight, and you better mind yourself. Us? Wait, who's coming then? <laughs> Billy, Jack and me. And what will I get for that? We'll share the loot. The one you seem to know about. Right. Wait for us at the abandoned manor house on the corner of Ledbrook Grove and Kensington Park Road at midnight. Deal. Isn't it? This accent is just killing me. This replay ending will condemn him again, but this time we choose the water and see what happens. And I shall not stop you. I prefer the other one where things go boom. <laughs> I won't stop you, plop. It's a bit dull. So, you're interested in Russian literature now? Quite lately. It is an interesting book. I remember a few lines. Really? I tried reading it myself, but I had a hard time understanding it. Yes, Doctor. It's about intelligence. Sherlock, I vaguely recall one of the lines. Sometimes it takes something more than intelligence to act. Intelligently. Mm. There were also a few words along the lines of pain and suffering are always inevitable for a large intelligence and a deep heart. Mm. Tell me, Doctor, does my brother show any signs of pain or suffering? Oh, not that I know of. Because you see, Doctor, behind all of his masquerade, my brother does possess a deep heart. So deep that he does not recall where he places his love. Well, I'm sure that... Uh... His love and his duty that, in the first place, should be directed towards the Empire. For without it, we would be nothing. A country filled with uncivilized men. I should leave now. Sherlock, Dr. Watson. Holmes, what just happened? What was that? The start of a new world. <laughs> Anything in the post, Watson? Any clients worthy of our attention? Only a second reminder from Mrs. Hudson about our new neighbor. She urges you to remove your... Oh, I don't care about that. Holmes, the lady who will be moving in shortly has requested the use of our spare room to place all... But you got it in skip it now. Wait, what? A... a lady? That's got quite a lot of gameplay hours in it, that has. The voice acting is just hilarious. The graphics are good, the stories are cool. I like it, I think it's a good game. I enjoyed that. Seed House. Nursery. 